today with Adulai Bari, co-founder of Ubuntu 2S and most recently awarded one of the most influential people in West Africa. Yeah, youth people. One of, uh, I'm between the 100 most influential youth in West Africa. Thank you for joining us. Welcome. So how does one become that influential? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, look, I was born in Guinea-Bissau in uh, 1989. So um, about 29 years. Uh, and I always think that I can do something for my country and I can be independent and think independently and I always uh, understand that also to be to think independently it's important to be economically independent so um, I always work on that path to become an entrepreneur so in 2014 we started a, a startup called Big Technology uh, it's um, a company uh, or a startup that working on software development, uh, networking, database integration. So and 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 that helped me have an experience. But before that, and I started to work for a telecommunication company uh, that helped me get more experience to understand how. Uh, how the process works in the companies, how we can manage a team, how we can, uh, you know, fundraise, how we can structure everything. So, uh, but after two years, we decided to create big technology. So I did big technology and my job, my full-time job during three years before, you know, leaving the company and becoming a full-time entrepreneur. So and I, I always also understand that it's important to uh, not be alone in the ecosystem. You cannot do anything alone. So we created Innova Lab in this purpose to say we need to create different type of companies, different type of you know startups that 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 will help us create a network of startup where I can provide a service for another, the other one can provide service for me. And then, but also we can create a narrative where people can understand that digital maybe is a solution, how they can use digital for their ba um, daily basis activities. So it's indirectly creating a mass of for customers. Uh, so so uh, from there, we also understand that we through entrepreneurship we can change the situation of our country. Uh, everyone looking for job uh, to work for the government, everyone looking to do politics to become rich. But entrepreneurship can help us create our own jobs, create opportunities for others. So combining all these things, we decide to create Innova Lab and that helped us to become this famous guy that you know and becoming an, an one of the influential youth in West Africa. But we don't limit it only our activities in, in Guinea-Bissau. So we work with different organizations. We go to Jigin Shore to do activities in Senegal. In, in, um, I, I went to Kenya, for example, and uh, I went to Nigeria for conferences, sharing ideas how they can also build ecosystem from scratch. So, so this, is, this help, help us uh, give another image of our country. Because normally, uh, um, always when you say Guinea-Bissau, people think about drugs, think about, you know, political instabilities and all those things. But when we talk about Guinea-Bissau, we give another image, another, uh, you know, another uh, story and narrative of our country where people, you people have ambition, they want to change the situation, than talking about drugs and politics. Wow. Um, well, work is a big part of, of life because it's how you contribute to society and it's also how you make a living for yourself. Mm -hmm. And it's always a big question for young people what they should study, what they should 
what career they should do and what profession they should go into and for you it seems that it's been very it's, it's very clear like you're passionate about uh, technology big data entrepreneurship and development and empowering youth mm -hmm. how did you make that choice that this is the path that i want to follow uh, you know, it's not very easy. That's why everyone needs a mentor in, in his life, you know. And I, I, I think this is one of the things I can share and I, I'm still sharing always. You cannot see the future of your own. You maybe need to talk to people that already did something uh, before you, you know. And I always, uh, I have one of my uh, brother, he, he's, he, he loves ID, ICT, but unfortunately he is not working in ICT now. So I follow him, I'm working in ICT and he's not doing it. But, but anyway, the, the, the most important thing, he inspired me. He showed me what you can do because I always ask questions, asking, okay, what I can do um, after the university, what can, I can do after my studies, what do you think I can do to, you know, to, you know, to um, do my dreams and all those things. And he will always told me that with ICT, you can be independent. I said, okay, I love being independent. I love thinking of my, by myself. And, and from there, I decide to follow that dream. But knowing the system knowing how things works he told me look to do ict you need to work in your mathematics you need to work in physics you need to improve your level in in um, you know in a life science than you know literature and all those things so so uh he always guide me so i think each of us need someone to guide them someone to say look i did this i did it wrong maybe you don't need to do, do the same maybe you can do it this way uh, so uh, yeah it was something really helped me and and with my own passion and, vi and vision i always you know connect to what he told me with what i want to do what i want to become so uh, that also helped uh, a lot so yeah mentor mentorship and vision and passion and follow your vision follow your passion oh that's wonderful you've already answered a few questions that we had prepared <laughs> oh, okay <laughs> um so tell us what is ubuntu to us so ubuntu to us is uh, uh you know a brand that we created to tackle uh, the problem of uh, access to electricity uh, is not a new challenge always uh, everyone talking about it people need to have access to energy but our passion is what we always talking about digital we want people to have to access access to digital for different reason maybe for the financial inclusion maybe for the access to information maybe for everything that you want but but without energy we cannot be you know in digital so without energy also we having a lot of problems healthcare problems so you ha i have one of for example one of my uncle he have asthma problem because of what because when he was child they they cook with you know these um you know um uh, how can garbage from from the animals and all those things is not good for people with asthma so so yeah why people doing that maybe it's the access of energy problems and 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 you have many people having eyes problems because of what they using uh, you know lamps and things that are not good for for their health so so combining these things we uh, we saw uh, we we you know this idea become um, you know we come up with this idea to say okay we can do something by using technology to solve the uh, the problem of access to energy and and one of the challenges the people maybe won't have 
a, a, a solar panel, they won't have a lamp, they won't have radio, they won't have TV, but they don't have enough money because of the poverty. So maybe creating a model where they can pay with small amount of money and maybe combining that with some help from abroad, abroad we can help them access to energy. And so Ubuntu to us is Ubuntu, as you know, what is Ubuntu? Ubuntu is uh, from Bantu. So we were thinking about a brand that will not be only from for Guinea-Bissau, it's a Pan-African brand. And we, discuss, we see that Ubuntu can be the good name because it's helping each other. Ubuntu is, you know, solidarity and fraternity. So we don't want to create just a business, we want to create an impactful business. So using that word it can quickly show that it's not only business is something to change the people's lives. So Ubuntu to us, it's a Ubuntu Solar Solutions. And uh, um, the, 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 our slogan is clean energy for all. So, so uh, and it's basically a, a kit uh, combined with uh, lamps, with, uh, you know, battery and with a solar panel. Uh, so um, what we did, we is not the, the first time that people doing it. So it, maybe you have it in Kenya and all those things, but we try to be do it differently. Uh, we did a market research. We understand that uh, the price is higher for our community, but even in West Africa, and we also understand that maybe. Uh, using the diaspora that contributing a lot, a lot of money just for the daily, the daily basis activities. Like, for example, if I have one of my friends in Portugal, I can ask him to send me a hundred dollars to buy a shoes to do something else. But my mom still don't have access to energy. Maybe if my brother contribute directly with the hundred dollar, we can have access to energy for a month. So we combine all these things to create our own business model. And the other thing is that the people are very clever, very intelligent. Maybe if we combine a solar panel on different things, they can take the solar panel to use for different, something else. So we use IoT to secure uh, the kit. So you cannot use our solar panel for something else. You you need to use it for with the same battery, the same lamps. It's a code, you cannot use it for something else. So we try to understand our market and bring a product that can fit with the market. So we, uh, we started a pilot and uh, the, the good news is that we signed an MOU with Orange Energy, so we're gonna uh, implement it in Guinea-Bissau. We're gonna start with them in November for the for pilot with Orange, and then if it works, I hope it's gonna work. We're going to move for Guinea-Conakry and then different countries. So Guinea-Bissau is a small country. We have just 1.6 million people. To have a successful business, you need you need to think big, and then create all the narrative, all the the necessary process to move to uh, another country, to have a large market size. So, um, but the partnership with Orange will help us, you know, open the doors around West Africa. Uh, they are in Mali and different countries, but they found that the model that we're proposing, because they're working with different other company, uh, I cannot name them maybe to not do it. <laughs> uh, but you have um, um, a Belgium company that doing quite the same thing. But the model that we're proposing to them, they said that if we do the pilot successfully, we're gonna do it in all countries where they have orange and where they want to do orange energy. In our team, you have people from Mali, from Senegal. We already started thinking out of Guinea-Bissau. For example, our engineer, our chief engineer officer, he's from Mali. 
uh, Sangare, but he did already five to ten years here. He live in here. We working together. Uh, he's our CTO uh, in at big technology, so we only use it for the same purpose for Ubuntu. And we have someone from Senegal. He is uh, the B two B manager for Ubuntu. So so we started thinking out of the box and trying to think forward to move to other countries. At what stage are you with Ubuntu exactly? Are you already uh, producing the kit? Yeah, so so we designed the kit and we will produce it in uh, we producing it in China. So uh, the idea we buy our own molds. Mold, mold. It's a, it's a, it's a part of the fabrication process. So we cannot buy the the that the the machine that can you know prepare the the plastic and it's big machines. We don't have enough money to do that. That's why we cannot have our own uh, you know facilities here for the moment. Uh, but we we buy our own molds because we have our own design. Uh, and we use in some technology inside that we don't want to share for the moment. So we working with uh, an American company called BioLight. They be, they have also an office in Kenya. Maybe you can know them. Uh, but but they have they already have uh, facilities in manufacturing. Uh, uh, you know their their buildings and all those things there. So we only buy our molds so that they can produce with the same machines but at the end to finalize the product with our own design they can use our own molds the idea when we're gonna go is to buy those machines and then bring them back to africa and have our own facilities in in, in africa and but for now we produce the the the, the kits in in china and then bring it to guinea bissau so we already bring some and we uh, we did our own pilot here, and we have a good feedback from the customers, even from people that want to become our distributors. So we uh, basically we did a container now; it's coming. So the container normally will, will arrive before November. Uh, so it's going to be a pilot with Orange, but now starting for Ubuntu. So, uh, so we did a pilot with 300 kids. We sell all of them, and uh, we have a good feedback. We're gonna change small things, uh, just um, some security part also, um, because it's not, it was the problem was not only people to take the solar panel to use for something else, but what they started to do is to. Uh, for example, use uh, a fan more than two, more than twelve vo volts, watt. So it's kind of something bigger than the product that they buy. So we need to close that door also. So you cannot use something that cannot be used for the same kit. So we only change that. And it was a good experience for us, a good feedback to change the product. So we basically gonna have a container coming now. So yeah, this is our stage. We already had a first funding from our. Um, uh, we raised uh, two hundred thousand uh, dollar for for the first um, you know target. So from there we gonna. Um. Let's talk a little bit about the kit so that I can wrap my brain around it. Um, how small is it or how big is it? And what did you envision? Because you've mentioned that they were using it for fans, which was 12 watts, which is like too big. So what did you envision that they would use the kits for? Yeah, the, we have two, 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 for the moment we, we have three uh, how, range. Okay, I can call that range. The first range is uh, th that we call Ubuntu Casa One. Ubuntu Casa One is uh, is uh, a solar panel, ten watt solar panel, plus a radio. Okay, MP3 radio. You can have also FM, uh, and then with um, um, a, a plug-in to charge your mobile phone. 
uh, three lamps one lamp torch like you can use to move around the house so that is for, for basic like for people in rural area and then we have the second range Ubuntu Casa 2 is uh, we added uh, like you can have a TV and a fan so uh, plus all that you have with Ubuntu Casa 1 and the up and down green is very easier. It's what is also the new things that we we added. So you basically can down and upgrade very easily because it's uh, when you want upgrade, we just add uh, a small box with a battery that can you know uh, you know gather more energy from the solar panel, so that you can use it with TV and fan. And then if you want downgrade, we can just take the, the those pieces, you know, back. So this is a bit, and then we have another option that we call Imprendido Solidario. It's a, uh, it's in Portuguese, don't, don't worry, I will translate. It's, it's a, a, so, a social entrepreneur. It's uh, maybe, a, I think it's a good translation. I think I read about this, is it the kiosk? Exactly, the kiosk. Is the kiosk. So we uh, basically the kiosk is uh, we want to create a spaces around the country where people can have access to energy, can watch TV, can can buy, can do mobile money, you know, can do mobile money, can do transactions, and maybe an option we are thinking about it access to Wi-Fi. But the problem with the Wi-Fi is we need to have a satellite because we don't have internet everywhere. So we are looking at that with Orange, how we're going to do it. Uh, but, but the idea is we, because we have entrepreneurship background, we, so we're going to train those people. They can manage the, the kiosks. They pay it sm uh, with small amount. And then after two or three years, it can become their own businesses. So they will still just pay in our services. Uh, but the, the important, the, the interesting thing is that you can invest on those kiosks. So you can be in US or somewhere else. You can say, I wanna buy kiosks from, I, I wanna buy kiosks from you, from Ubuntu, to, for my, my friend or for my brother that doing school in in africa somewhere else so after school he can do the business so so it's kind of creating and, and it's a good network for us also because at the end of the day we can say if you have ubuntu kit in your house you can chat your phone with uh, with the, the ubuntu kiosk by paying a small amount of the money because you are in the network we also creating a database for for the banks if someone doing a good business and he paying every month, it's a good customer for the bank. It's a good customer for the telco companies. So, but by creating opportunities for those youth people. And how much are the kids? So the Casa, the Casa Zero One, it's uh, hundred forty-five thousand safer. So you pay it in one, one year and a half. And we have a strategy that you can pay during the cashew campaign also, because we found out that people have more money during the cashew campaign than the other season. So you can pay more during the cashew campaign and then pay less during the other period. So, so they, they pay like, um, I can say $2 a week, maximum. Okay, that's Casa 1, 145,000 so far. Yeah. What about Casa 2 and the kiosk? Uh, Casa 2, it's about 435,000 so far. Mm -hmm. And you have the, the kiosks that uh, it's about 2 million. Uh, but the kiosk uh, is not paid in one or one half year, it's about three years. And we uh, basically 
uh, we create like we find something to invest on it then the the young that will manage it invest so we create the business for them and then find people to invest in that and we have in people that have interest to put two million in the kiosks and then uh, have an income that they can manage because through our system our platform you can see how much he making because he will use tablet to you know to register everything going on or what he said and you can see how the business growing mm -hmm. and there are a lot of social investors that have good interest on that just to understand from the entrepreneurial side you said for ubuntu 2s you have an investment but the first company you started was big technology yeah and so does that mean that you first made big technology profitable and now you use that as your salary basically your own income yeah and then from big technology you launched ubuntu, ubuntu exactly okay. exactly did you need an investment in the beginning to start big technology or how did you start big technology because it seems to be the foundation yeah. now of everything that you can do right exactly so we uh, at the beginning uh, i i i was in need of funding um, and that's why i I find a job. The idea was, you know, earlier than 2014. But I, you know, in Guinea-Bissau, we don't have uh, much opportunities in funding uh, venture capitals or, you know, seed capital. And then to convince people to invest on those projects, they will just say, you are dreaming. So and technology wasn't something that was well known and even now i think we need to do much more work to convince people to invest in technology but um when we started i i, I was using my salary when i was working for the telco company where i was working to pay another people's salary and uh, we started with uh, small activities like creating creating a website i'm a developer so i can after work i can sit and create a website and but i need someone to go to talk to companies to say we can build a website we can uh, build your internal network cabling your company or your you know office so and i hire someone I was paying him each month from my salary. It was our commercial. So, so I was the CEO, was the CTO, was everything. But it was a, a very interesting experience. And uh, from there, I found one of my friend. Uh, his dad have a successful company, and he was uh, maybe his dad cannot understand. But he cannot understand because he did a good studies, and I show him the the important uh, the importance of investing in big technology, and he convinced his dad, and then his dad put the money. That's why we started representing Microsoft, HP, having small stock, Logrand, having a fiber. We can visit our store. We have even a store, a showroom where we sell. Uh, we can show the product that we can install. So it's downstate. So uh, from there, we had you know a capital to to move the project forward. And and now we can say even our bank can give us money because we they have our record of bills that we what we we did the with which companies we work in and they have a contract that we already signed with different companies. So um, we create, we validated, it's kind of saying, okay, I validated the concept by using my own, you know, salary, and then show that concept to my friend. He explained to his dad, and then he invested, and now, you know, we thinking about launching, and, and now we launching another big project that we call Ubuntu. So, yeah, this is a bit of the process how we started and then.
come come here, come to here. But, but to 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 you know to go to uh, the other countries, we need more investment. So we gonna uh, now we maybe two of the the investment that I the guarantee that the 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 African Development Bank created. From there, we can use it to have more capital, or we can apply for the venture capital. We see we're looking maybe in U.S. or some venture capital working in Africa to see how to raise more funding so that we can grow very quickly. Yeah, thank you for for sharing that because uh, I think it's quite interesting to see your journey from starting with a, yeah. as a service provider yeah. using part of your salary to pay a salesperson to go out and talk about your business yeah. because you know, well, this activity, I can even afford to pay someone. Yeah. My time is more valuable for now. Mm -hmm. Working in a job, making the money, sending someone out. Yeah. But then when the time has come, I will quit my job and focus full time. Exactly. And I think I'm just asking this because I think for many people, young mm. people that want to go into business, the question is always, how do I start? Yeah. I don't have the, the money maybe or that I can do my business full time. So how, how can I start? And yeah. I'm always curious about the blueprints and the stories of, yeah. of other people, how they, how they started. And if someone hears your story and saying, okay, they gonna want to go international in Africa with a solar business, mm -hmm. you know, then they might not realize all the different steps that it took to yeah. there from building a website yeah. to having a stable business here yeah. to being okay with banks to then launching an international yeah, sort of business right, yeah. as well. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. What did your family say when you said, okay, I will, I will become an entrepreneur? <laughs> I can tell you even now, there uh, some of them, they don't know I lived my work. So I, I don't want it to create all those, you know, troubles and, you know, because uh, and, and sometimes we're trying to bring people in our lives without knowing that they cannot understand. And, and uh, I cared about my, my dad and my, my mom. I explained to them. I tried always to convince them. And the only thing also, I'm from a family where they uh, always teach us how to be independent, you know, how to, uh, you know, to not depend on someone or something. And even we, they try to teach us that we cannot depend on them. So we need to, you know, follow our dreams and then try to fight for our own life. And even in our tribe, we, when you grow up and then you have certain age, they can give you a goat. They can tell you this is your starting point. You can go and try. So, and I think that also helped me a lot to convince my dad and my mom. The rest, it was, I don't care. I don't care because uh, why? Because I think this is my dream. This is what I want to do. Even now, I think it's still a dream because I didn't attend where I want to go. But, but um, what I can say, it's always if you focus in your dream and then try to prepare yourself. The most important is to be ready in your spirituality and in your head. If you are ready, you can do everything. And when I decide, I just explain to my mind. Some friends can say, are you sure? You gonna leave your job? Are you sure? Even some of them are trying to tell me, maybe okay, take take a break, like a leave, like to say to I, like I can ask for my for my company, give me one year, I can go and try business. If it not work, I can come back. I say no, I will not do that because I know my, if if I wasn't successful, I will continue to try. So I will never come back. So it's, it's something like that, but I understand them. They just care. They don't want to see me in the difficult situation. But I, what we need to understand is we need to sacrifice to do what we want to do to follow our dreams. And it's really possible. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. I love that. What, what was your 
biggest challenge in on your entrepreneurial journey so far? What would you say? Was there ever a time when you thought, oh gosh, it's that's too much. I, you know, <laughs> I don't see a way out right now. Uh, like I said, the, the, you know, the spirituality and uh, being ready, it's, it's really important. And, and when you have that, every challenge, you can see it as a lesson for you to move forward. I cannot tell you exactly this is the big and the huge thing I, uh, you know, I face during my entrepreneurship journey because there are a lot of them. But but um, I always take them as you know as a learnings, and then and then move forward. Uh, um, there sometimes you can explain here and there to people to ask them to invest in your project. Sometimes some of them will will tell you go and find a work. Sometimes some of them can tell you this will never work. So you will. Uh, hear many things, but but um, the only thing, like I said, it to always think forward. You know, you stress the importance of having a clean mind, like the hygiene of thought. Yeah, and I find that quite powerful and a very important advice because everything is always happening in our minds. And yeah, as you say, if any anything that happens is always. A learning opportunity for you yeah. that is all you will see it yeah anything that happens can always be a disaster you won't have the inner calm to yeah. see the solutions that might be right there in front of you exactly was there ever a point you know when you said now I know I can do it mm -hmm. now I know I can do anything that I want to do that is my dream yeah, sure. I, I think um, I was looking for a good experience in what I want to do. It's, uh, I had a chance to move in different departments. And my goal is I don't want it to be in the top management. So because it's kind of closing everything because you have many engagements. Uh, but I always, uh, you know, look for some goals each year to say I want to be a good manager. So when I was, um, I become a department manager, I said, okay, this is um, the goal that I was looking for because now I have a team under me. So I will try to manage him in the good way and have this, a successful department. And what, in, what was interesting is that, and they always was, each year they was adding some services and activities in my department. I, and then I, each year is the challenge becoming interesting. But I find out that, okay, maybe if I, I, I live now, it's, it's the good moment because, um, uh, I still facing challenges. Maybe it's a good time to experiment, you know, the other level, because um, after the, the 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 department officer, maybe I can become a director. I don't want to become a director in another company. I want to become a director in my own company. So the 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 way that I move from that company, help it's I have a target. Yeah, I had a target. And I, I was looking for skills, I look, so I, I, I find out it's the time. About the money, you will never be ready. Because I always said, okay, I will save the money. I will, no, you cannot do that. You cannot save the money and then say, I will leave the company where I work in and start a business. I think my chance was to start a business, invest for and going forward, investing, going forward, investing, going forward, and having more skills, more experience, and all those things. Uh, and my target never, it wasn't really a target about amount of money I need, but the skills and experience. And then when I find out that it's a time to leave, I only decide to leave. Wow. I, that lesson is gold for me because yeah. I, 
<laughs> it's so good. You know, I think many people, they don't trust their inner voice about what, what they can contribute, what their dream is. Yeah. So then, since they don't trust that, and don't trust that it's coming from a place that they can trust, uh -huh. they always look for security mm -hmm. and they think, oh no, I still need more money. And then they get trapped by more money because they also add more expenses, a yeah. house, a car, yeah. whatnot, yeah. and they will never leave. So I find it tremendously inspiring that you said, you know what, I only want to go to that level. I don't want to go higher because then I will have more responsibilities yeah. and it will become a trap. Exactly. And what you said is, I don't need more money. The, the treasure that I'm going for is skills and experience. Mm -hmm. And once I have it at that level, I need to move. Otherwise, I will be trapped. Yeah. Wow, that is such yeah. a problem. And, and the, the other thing is that I never, I moved to different level in the company, but I never changed my life level. So it, for example, it, I arrive in same level uh, in, in a level where I can the company can buy a car for me. B but you have a choice. You can buy a more expensive car, and then the, they can pay fifty percent, and then you can you can pay the rest. I decide to buy a very cheaper car. Why I decide to buy the car is because I need a car because sometimes they can call me at night. I cannot say I can go because I was in IT, they can have a trouble at night. But I, I found out that there, there was, people can say this is a taxi because it's a Mercedes, you know, here the Mercedes is a taxi. But I, I decided to have a Mercedes. But maybe I can have a big car, but I decided to have Mercedes because I know when I will leave for, to work for my company, I will not have that big car because I will start something very different. I need money to do in to to do to put in something else than uh, having that level of life. So it's very powerful. Yeah. And I think the lessons that your family instilled in you be independent in your thinking, in your spirituality, uh, just in life in general, and, and trust that and yeah. make that priority helped you to make wise decisions even yeah. in that. Yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. I you. love that. Yeah. One final question from my side. What would be your advice to a young person today in Guinea-Bissau? Uh, my advice is to say um, this country needs uh, people to change the situation. And the country have more young than the older generation and we have a challenge not only to prepare ourselves but to prepare our future because the country are where where the country are because our elders didn't do what they they must do because they normally their challenge was to prepare our future so we have two challenges now we have to work our present and prepare our future. And to do that, we need to prepare ourselves. And we need to understand that there is not a magic. Someone cannot bring the solution for us. We need to work for our dreams, for our future. The solution, waiting for my dad, waiting for my uncle, waiting for from my, I don't know, something else, because he's be going to become a minister to hire me in the government to, no, it's not a solution. Because, I, and then the life shows us it's not possible because every year we change in government. Every year people come in and go in. So it's not something sure. It's not something very, you know, sustainable. So I think our generation need to think about sustainability. It's not the result now. We need to think forward, think tomorrow, after a year, after two years. Uh, and and, and the, the, the example I always give is we always do in cashew. Because each year we waiting for cashew to have uh, money so that we can expend that money for the next campaign. We are not processing cashew because it's easier to take cashew as it are 
to send it to China or India. We are not processing it. So why? We need the result now. We don't want to work hard and then have something very sustainable. So yeah, my advice can be if you have a dream, you need to work hard. Don't wait for someone. Don't wait for funding. Find your own strategies, your own solutions, and find a mentor and move forward. Thank you so much for sharing. Welcome.